And I would talk about this all the time. If you really want to motivate your people, teach them how to be successful. Yeah. because you know that's what you both of you guys did you you did the work to learn how to become successful and you and you built you know great businesses and you and you made a lot of money and uh, uh that that doesn't ha that happens because you do the work to you know to grow your skills and your knowledge and and that and then apply those to helping other people do that so that that's all i ever did i mean i i'm not a motivator i don't i don't i'm not a motivational speaker i'm a teacher <laughs> Just so everybody kind of knows what we're doing today, uh, those mm -hmm. of you that are listening in, um, Hector Lamarck, uh, if there was no Hector Lamarck, a lot of you guys have heard us refer to him uh, in, in several of our episodes over the past year. Uh, but without Hector, there wouldn't be the lifestyles that Jeff and I are able to live today. And he's been such a, a big uh, in influencer, uh, uh, just made a big influence, big impact on our lives. Oh. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, Jeff, you would agree. I think there's there's certain people that, that come along. I mean, I've, I've got a great father who is my hero. And then there's other people that are also father figures in your life. And I, I would look at he uh, Hector as one of those in my life. And, Jeff, I think you would agree with that. 100%, yeah. And uh, getting involved in business at a very young age, I was 22 years old, as many of you know. Uh, when I started in business, newly married, uh, probably you know a little bit nervous and scared and anxious about getting life going. How am I going to make this work? How am I going to provide for my family? And fortunately, I was recruited into an awesome financial company and recruited into an incredible organization, which was Hector Lamarck's organization. And um, what uh, I was lucky enough to have happen, or blessed enough to have happen, is the the guy who was training me gave me a set of cassette tapes that Hector put together. It was called the Best of Hector Lamarck, and it had really all the fundamentals of how to win in our business uh, on those uh, those cassette tapes. So um, things like overcoming objections and closing sales and, and prospecting and recruiting and and I got a hold of those. And uh, I remember my my very first Saturday training meeting. I uh, uh, got out of that meeting. And uh, Kurt Blackburn, who gave me the set of, uh, of uh, audios, uh, I, I got those. I, I went to sit in my car. I plugged one in. The first one, the first one I saw was overcoming objections. I thought, man, if I could just overcome every objection, yep. nothing would stop me, right? So I, was, I, I listened to this audio, and, and uh, Chris Howard, who is also in Hector's organization, just went over a million dollars in income, uh, annual income, which is, uh, which is a, a big accomplishment, obviously. And Especially back then. Yeah, this is back in 2001. Yeah. So, um, that long ago? <laughs> it was that long ago. <laughs> so I, uh, I remember that. So I, the first thing I did is I called my mom. I said, Hey mom, I just want you to know I'm starting this financial company. I'm going to make a million dollars a year at this thing, you know? And, uh, she's, Oh, that's cute. That's great. You know, I uh, hope you do. And, uh, that was kind of that. But anyway, I, um, th that was kind of the beginning of everything. And, and, uh, you know, at 22 years old, I just listened to those. I, I wore out the cassette tapes. I had to get a couple of different sets because I wore them out. Um, but I just memorized them, got really good at the fundamentals of the business because of Hector. So Hector didn't even know me at this point, but he trained me. He really trained me to be successful in our, in not just our financial business, but in, in a lot, in a lot life. of regard in life. Yeah. Um, and, uh, my goal when I was, uh, starting out was I wanted to, um, get enough results so that Hector would know who I was without me coming up and saying, Hey Hector, I'm Brandon Neal, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and that happened. We, we, uh, we became regional leaders and went to one of your regional vice president meetings, Hector. And you came up to me and says, is this Brandon Neal? And it just felt really good to, uh, to know that I was, uh, I was doing something that was getting results that, 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 uh, made all that happen. Anyway, just, just through the next uh, seven years, we, we went from zero to a million dollars a year in income ourselves. And um, just, you know, so much of that is attributed to what you um, taught us not to do just in business, but also how to be a, a better father, better husband, uh, you know, just a good person in general. And Jeff was able to join our organization as well. Um, 2006, is that when you joined? Yeah. And so you kind of saw that whole environment, that whole training system that Hector had was what we were doing. Yep. It's, it's funny. I mean, cause that's what you did to me. It wasn't cassettes anymore, but it was CDs and you just gave me the CD set of the best of Hector. And then Hector had just come out with the system. I think you, you called it at that point. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was powerful, you know, cause I was young. I didn't, 
I, I didn't believe in myself enough, but you know, Hector constantly had talked about on these audios, if you can develop your skill, nobody will care about your age. And he was constantly right. saying those things. And, and that's what I did, you know, it was just wore out those audio tapes. I could probably do Hector's big bass shop audio by memory still today. Yep. No doubt. That, that, that was, that was the best one. In my opinion, that's your, that's your best ever. So that's the best. Well, yeah. It was really that's good. good. I'll, I'll start pushing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hector, uh, yeah, we just, uh, I think we'd like to turn some time over to you, of course, and just tell us, you know, you live a great life today and maybe we can start off with the life you live today and then we can backtrack of how you've created that awesome life and what sure. you've done to impact so many people's lives. I mean, it's, um, I mean, you've got thousands and thousands of people that you've touched lives you've touched and continue to touch today. And, uh, it's, it's, it's just awesome. So, um, anyway, I'd like to turn some time over to you and tell us, tell us what life right. is like and who you are. Life is, uh, life is pretty, we're pretty blessed. Um, we, we've had, uh, you know, by through building our Primerica business, uh, I've been able to uh, take care of my family, take care of uh, a lot of other things. And but most important is the lifestyle that I've created for my family. And I've got two um, two children, my daughter, Janae, who's 42 or three. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember now. And my son, Dak, who's 44, or 40, almost 45. Uh, next month he'll be 45. And when I got started in, in our business in Primerica, uh, uh, they were uh, four and five years old, I think, at that time. So that was a long time ago. I've been at this for uh, about 40 years now. And as a result of that, uh, we built uh, a you know a bit a big business. Uh, businesses uh, we have uh, 16,000 agents, I think, somewhere in that that area. Um, I've been very blessed to make a significant, almost a hundred million dollars in Primerica so far. And that just continues on. Um, I actually, uh, don't work as hard as I used to work. I used to work like a crazy person, but I've been enjoying life. I think, uh, one of the things that was really important is, um, spending time with my family and being offering the opportunity as both my kids, uh, we put them through college. One went to Stanford, one went to Wharton Business School, and um, so they've, on, on their own right, become very successful uh, people, which is really great. Uh, it's been awesome that they have been able to, you know, take advantage of our situation. Uh, I have four uh, uh, grandkids, two boys, two girls, and uh, we spend an awful lot of time with them. And we just actually just came back from a trip. We were in Singapore and Bali for almost 18 days. And uh, it was uh, incredible. So we travel a lot. We've been to over 70 countries uh, and um, we're still still doing that. I hadn't been to Bali, had been to Singapore before, but I hadn't been to Bali. And we were able to do that, we rented a, a villa right on the ocean and had an amazing time there with our daughter and her two girls. And uh, but, you know, life has been amazing. I mean, building a big business and being able to travel and being able to experience uh, things that most people, unfortunately, are not able to experience. And it's all because uh, I made a decision to build the business, but not just to build a business, to become great at that business. I think a lot of times people uh, forget that um, money follows greatness. And I, the one thing I was always focused on doing was being great at what I do. And as a result of that, we've had a lot of success. And that's kind of what I teach in my business is, you know, making the effort to become great at what you do so that you can live the life that you've, uh, that you dream of. So we've uh, had, uh, we have, you know, now we have uh, three homes, one in Las Vegas, that's our, you know, our state principal place. Uh, we have a home in La Newport Beach, California, and we also have um, a home in Cabo, um, Mexico, which is, uh, which is an amazing place. Spent a lot of time there now. And, uh, so we follow, we kind of follow the weather, you know, wherever the weather's the best that you'll, you'll find us there. And, uh, you know, life has been just incredible as a result of us making a decision to become great at what we do and to build a big business. So, very uh, good. I don't know if that's kind of what you had. In yeah, mind, but. no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, just to have that, that time and that freedom and, and obviously mm -hmm. the income coming in. So Hector, did you come from money or how mm -hmm. did you start out? No, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I'm the fifth of seven children. My, my, both my parents are Mexican and my dad was uh, from Mexico city and 
he uh, had a third grade education and he came to the United States when he was um, 18 and 19, somewhere in that range. Met my mom. My mom's family's from Guadalajara, Mexico. So uh, they ended up falling in love, getting married and having seven kids. And I'm the fifth of the seven. Um, and I grew up in a thousand square foot home with nine people in it. And, um, you know, not not any real money. Well, my parents were, my, my dad worked two jobs his entire life, worked in a factory, plus he cut hair, you know, in our home. He had a, had a barbershop set up in our home. And my dad worked two jobs this, his entire life. And uh, we had we had the necessities, but we were definitely, you know, on the lower spectrum uh, economically. And, um, but great examples, both my parents were just really fantastic people. And hardworking people and good people. And um, they, they instilled all those kind of principles of being good people to uh, all seven of us. And I think uh, as a, as a result of watching how they operated their life with a minimal uh, kind of situation that they were in, it's, um, it's been pretty, pretty incredible what we've been able to accomplish and just shows you what is uh, what the potential is out there for those of you who are really serious about being becoming successful uh there's nothing that can hold you back but yourself uh you know i think one of the things i talk about a lot is growing you you know that you know that you're not going to get where you want to go unless you grow yourself and i think that's one of the things i've done over the last geez almost 50 years now and uh what i taught my kids and what i teach in my business as well very good yeah, it's awesome. You know, Hector, I think that, um, you know, as you, as you talk about growing up with nine of you in a thousand square foot home, it's actually funny. Yesterday I posted on social media that um, there's this post that's going around like crazy talking about the average income in the United States, $70,000 a year, but the mm -hmm. average home price is 400000 and in 1960, the average income was like 11000 and the average home price was 15000 which seems like a lot closer gap. Closer, yeah. But if you look at the, the average work week of men in the 1960s was 50 hours a week versus the average work week of men today in last year was 34 hours. Wow. And so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so if you, take, if you take the same amount of time, it actually makes... Uh, it makes buying a home easier today if men worked the same amount of hours. So mm -hmm. I guess a question I have is, is I've watched your work ethic and obviously um, know what that has built and the lifestyle that is built and the people that it's influenced, you know, like Brandon and I and, and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people probably by the, at this point. Watching your father, I'm sure your mom worked uh, – hard as well. I'm guessing that she was a homemaker. Is, is that yes, correct? Yes, she was a homemaker. She I mean, didn't work at, in, outside the home. Until yeah, with nine kids, kids, she was always up. working, yeah. right? Yeah. So did, the, do you feel like you got that work ethic and maybe that drive from your parents? And then how did your father instill those things uh, into you? Because I think there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast and they probably are starting like your parents started, right? And yeah. trying to you know, themselves take their family to the next generation, uh, uh, and, and progress. So what, what are kind of some of those principles that your father instilled into you? Was it just watching him work hard or was he talking yeah. to you about those things? It was more watching. He, I mean, he didn't really talk about it much, but you know, he worked, he literally worked two jobs. My, uh, t the whole time I was at home where he worked a, a full-time job in a factory where they made, you know, like bathtubs and sinks and toilets and all that. He, he did that for until he retired, but he also cut hair. I mentioned that he would cut hair every day. Like he basically worked seven days a week, my entire, the whole, until I left home. And even after that, but, uh, so I, I learned and my mom, you know, which is a homemaker, but you know, taking care of nine people, cooking for nine people, you know, cleaning all, all the things that she had to do and making sure, you know, we were good citizens and all that. So she worked uh, like uh, really, really hard as well. So they both, they were a team and my dad brought home the, the money to feed us and take care of us and house us. And my mom took care of the home. And so it's a big job when you have, you know, nine people that you have to be, you know, watching over. Okay. And, uh, but I think with just really watching the way that my, they both operated, they're both, uh, you know, I, I never heard them complaining. I always had good, 
you know, a good way about them. I think I can't, uh, you know, my father had some of the best people skills of anybody I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was a pleasure to watch him work. I mean, when he would cut hair at our home, you know, might have, you know, five or 10 men there sitting in the garage, you know, talking and stuff. And while he was cutting hair and I got to see how he interacted with those people and my, his people skills were just, uh, they're some of the best I've ever seen in my life, honestly. And I, I've witnessed a lot and uh, I, I was fortunate to learn that from him. And uh, because, you know, your people skills are going to have a, a gigantic impact on how you do overall in business and life and everything. So where did so he, where fortunate. did he learn those people skills from? Do you know? You know, I don't know because he was basically an orphan, you know, from the time he was 10 years old, he was in Mexico city and he was an orphan. And uh, I don't know how he did that. I, I, maybe it was innate, God given. I, I don't know, because he didn't have a he didn't have because he didn't have parents after he was ten. Mother, his father left the family, unfortunately. My grandfather and my grandmother passed away when he was uh, around ten years old, and wow. then he was on his own from that point forward. And so, where he learned that, I have no idea, but he did, and he. You know, considering where you know his, situ his life situation, where he what he's able to do and create a you know a cohesive great family and all that. So good, sounds all, like all maybe the, maybe he just had a tremendous amount of gratitude about life. I mean, and and, and maybe that transferred to yeah. you know how he felt about himself because he was truly great. I mean, I, I don't know, but yeah, I, yeah, that definitely could be it. I don't know, yeah. honestly, I don't, I don't know where he learned all that, but. I know he taught it to me and he taught it to all my brothers and sisters. And, uh, wow. you know, it's, really it's, cool. it's, it's, it's kind of a miraculous story. And thank God he came to the United States. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What a, what a, what a great, uh, great example for you. And, mm -hmm. and, and Hector talk about, I know you, you know, you were, you were a, a really good student. I know you were a, a good athlete in high school mm -hmm. and uh, just talk about how all that transferred. You you went to college and, and graduated and then, then maybe a little bit about how you kind of started looking into entrepreneurship and, and, uh, I mean, you, you came from where you came from, but there was this other world out there that you were seeing and maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Time. You know, I was a, I was a good student. You know, I went to college. I have a degree in psychology, and uh, um, and I was gonna. You know, my goal was to be a clinical psychologist. I was an athlete I, in high school. I played all you know, baseball, football, basketball, ran track. I did all the sports, and then I kind of gravitated toward um, towards basketball. And I played basketball in college, so I was an athlete, and, and I actually played tennis in college too. And I didn't start playing tennis until I was later, but. I had, I had really, I've always had great work ethic by following my, my dad, you know, yeah. the good story is, uh, you know, when I was, um, when I was uh, in college, I started playing tennis and I had never played tennis before, but I really fell in love with that. And I started uh, really working at it. Senior, I, I played number one on my college tennis team. I was MVP. Um, mm -hmm. and, and when I was in high school, played basketball. I was a, I was a, a, the team captain of our, my high school basketball team. And, um, so I was really into sports and I, I just applied that work ethic that I had in becoming good at, at, you know, sports when I got into business. And, and so, um, that was one of the things I, I, I noticed that if, if you make a decision that you're going to be great at something and you do the work and you put it in and put into that to see things can happen. I think if, if you go away from anything that I talk about today, I think you all, no matter who's listening to you, you have, um, you know, potential that far surpasses where you probably are right now or probably where you think you can be. Uh, and working, uh, working at being great at whatever it is you do, I think is the key. I mean, whatever it is you're going to get involved in, have the, have the, uh, the idea, the the thought of just how can I become great at what I do? And I think uh, I have a saying: money follows greatness. And so, if you notice people that are great at anything, whether it's maybe they're actors, maybe they're business people, maybe they're athletes it doesn't really matter what it is the great ones uh you know end up doing well financially 
And uh, there's no, you know, we're in the United States of America. I don't know if people are listening to us outside of this country, but there's no limit to which you can accomplish here. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter. You know, that has nothing to do with where you're going to end up. You're going to determine where you're going to end up based on on what you focus on and what you do and in, in, in the work you do to grow your skills and your knowledge in whatever it is you're involved in. That's That was uh, what I focused on is just being you know, being great at what I did and the rest kind of, kind of, kind of happened. Um, is that, did I cover that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. interesting because yep. yeah. you did, I mean, you went from college and then did you go directly into jewelry sales after college? I did right, right out of, right out of, right out of college. I, I, you know, I was already married and got married when I was, a, you know, into my junior year in college and we had a baby and, uh, you know, my Jan, my wife, Jan was an x-ray tech and, uh, I needed a job right out of college. So I got into, I just answered an ad and, uh, in the jewelry business, I, I worked in the jewelry business for five or six years right after college. And that's actually where I was introduced to Primerica is, is, uh, one of the, my office manager at one of the stores that I managed, um, her father was in Primerica and he recruited me into Primerica, thank goodness. And, um, and that's, you know, that's how I got started in the business I'm in now. And, I was looking at a lot of things. I actually, the truth is, I, I was, I was really, really, uh, always have been focused on being being successful somehow financially. I wanted that really, really badly. So I was looking at a lot of different things, and um, uh, thank goodness I was, I was introduced to the business I, to Primerica, and I'm in now, and and I just focused on being great at it, and then everything else happened from there. You know, the money started to flow, and now you were. Started to happen. You were you were preparing yourself. I, I know your your story of um, mm-hmm. you know going to Tom Hopkins and and uh, yeah. trying Amway and and all the other mm-hmm. type of businesses. You kept trying, mm-hmm. trying to right. figure out a way to get get free. And exactly. uh, how much of that do you think prepared you so that when Primerica did, I know, and I also know you joined Primerica, then you quit at first, right? Didn't you quit one time and you came back? Well, I, and, I, yeah, yes, yes, that's so, exactly right. So maybe quit. talk and about some re- of that. I got re-recruited uh, later. I just didn't do anything. Well, it's not so much I quit. I didn't even do anything. Okay. I, I did end up getting a license, but I never did anything until, uh, well, this is probably a good, good thing to share. Um, what happened is I, I got licensed. I didn't ever write a sale. I never went to a meeting. I never did anything. And then, um, I was, um, this, this is kind of the lot things that happen in our lives that, that are life changing. But I, I, my son Dak was turning five and I asked, uh, the owner of the jewelry company I worked for if I could have a Friday night off because they were going to, we're going to have a birthday party for my son Dak, who was turning five. And he told me, no, he says, no, I need you to be there because it costs me money if you weren't there because I was the manager of the store. And uh, and I was like, I couldn't believe that because I had just opened the store. I had been working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week for a month or so. And and then they he told me I couldn't even attend my son's fifth birthday. And that was really the that happening to me was the impetus that made me decide I was never going to work for somebody again, that I was going to figure out a way to to be successful in, in something else in a business of my own where I didn't have to ask somebody for time off, you know? And so, um, that happened and that's what got me to, to think about you know, going and that. So I recontacted the person that had talked to me about the business and, um, I said, look, I'm, I'm ready to go now. And then, so I started part-time and, uh, it took me about a year to get to the point where I could quit my where I quit my job and went full time. But uh, that was it was all started from my boss in the jewelry business um, telling me I couldn't have you know basically three hours off for my to attend my son's fifth birthday. So yeah, I think it's interesting uh, because Hector, you had talked about how you were always looking for a way to become successful mm-hmm. in that perspective. Because when you end up at that moment, you know we've recruited thousands of people who maybe ended up in a similar situation, and they said, "Oh, I'm just too busy, and I don't have the time to to make Primerica happen." Versus, I know a similar thing happened to me. I had gotten my pay cut. Brandon had followed up with me, and it was like, "All right, I, I mean, I, I've got to do something," you know. Mm-hmm. And I think the perspective of that. I am no longer going to allow somebody to control my paycheck. I'm going to go build a business versus what most people's perspective is. I don't have enough time. 
So what what do you think? Because I know all, all of this is mindset, right? It's how we perceive That's all mindset. everything. So what do you think gave you that catalyst to decide, you know, I'm not going to let this happen anymore. I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to end up having to work more hours. Did you talk to your wife about that? What do you think was the catalyst to make that decision to just go, I'm going to make this happen? Well, well, first, because what happened with my boss, that, that catalyst of not having control over my time and not even being able to attend my son's birthday party was just like, it was ridiculous, you know, and I was so angry. I mean, I was really angry. So I made a decision right then that I didn't know how, what I was going to do exactly or how I was going to make this happen, but I was going to be my own boss and I wasn't going to work for somebody again. And um, so, and luckily I had... I was already introduced to Primera Guides. I just I didn't really get involved in. It. I didn't do anything until that happened. So sometimes people need a push, you know, if you will, right? I, and that was the push for me. That was the thing where kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Right? I decided now I'm I'm going to figure out how to make 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 it happen for my family and for me. And luckily, you know, in our business. Uh, People were even at that when I first got started, which is almost forty years ago. People were making really big money. The guy that got uh, that uh, ended up being direct to uh, Mike Sharp was this was like he was making eight hundred thousand dollars a year back in nineteen eighty four, which is a lot of money today. Let alone nineteen eighty four, right? That was like probably like the equivalent of making three million dollars a year or more, I'd say. But I saw that I saw that he was doing that well. And he was just a nice guy. He wasn't anything extraordinary. And I just, I felt, well, if he figured out how to do it, I could figure out how to do it. And so then I went to work and 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 did the work to figure out how to do it, how to get great at the business. And then, uh, you know, I think the thing that allowed me to have the most success is I'm, I'm very good at teaching, uh, teaching people how to do what I do. I think if you're going to become successful at any business, you have to duplicate yourself. You got to have to have, you can't do it all yourself. You need to have other people, uh, you know, helping and being involved. And so I learned how to, I, I think I, I think the, the, my claim to fame is I'm very good at training people and teaching people how to do what I did. And I think if you're going to grow up any kind of business, you have to d- duplicate yourself. You got to, it can't just be you because there's only so many hours in a given day, right? 24 hours in a day. And you can't, can't be everywhere at all the time. You have to have other people. You uh, you often are, often say that you're not a motivational speaker. You're a teacher, but right. it is motivating because you teach. And so you're one of the most motivational speakers I've ever listened to because I know when I go to Hector's meeting or I listen to Hector Lamarck, I'm getting taught how to actually freaking do it. You know, getting exactly. results is sure motivating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's, you know, I, and I, and I would talk about this all the time. If you really want to motivate your people, teach them how to be successful yeah. because, you know, that's what you, both of you guys did. You, you did the work to learn how to become successful and you, and you built, you know, great businesses and you, and you made a lot of money and uh, uh, that, that doesn't ha- that happens because you do the work to, you know, to grow your skills and your knowledge and, and that, and, and then apply those to helping other people do that. So that, that's all I ever did. I mean, I, I'm not a motivator. I don't, I don't, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a teacher. I always saw myself as a teacher. Well, I think it's, I think, uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say one of the things I've noticed Hector and maybe you can comment on this is a lot of times when you talk about getting great at something or becoming the best at somebody, somebody assumes that it's having this complicated knowledge, especially in, in, in the financial services industry, like we're in and, and what you did a great job of is is taking that knowledge and simplifying it so that anybody believed that they could do it and then go out and duplicate that process. Maybe you can comment on that a little bit because I think it's powerful. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. That's what I try to do is try to, to uh, teach it in such a way that, that – uh, because – and a lot of things, like if you're going to be a doctor, for example, that's a very, very complicated business to be in. You know, the amount of study you have to do to become, you know, a great physician, surgeon, whatever, is not many people can do it uh, just from the educational standpoint, whatever. But in, in a sales business, anybody can do it. I don't care what business you're in. So, um, you know, I was a very shy person before I got involved in Primerica. Uh, I'm, I see myself as, uh, I'm an introvert. I like being by myself. I don't have any problem being by myself. And so, um, 
you know, because I was an introvert, you know, I was always worried about what people thought about me. And uh, when I decided I was going to become successful, I said, you know, I, I, I've got to stop worrying about what people think. I got to get great at what I do. And then I got to teach some people how to do it. And that's that was the impetus and the focus I had for and still have today all those years. I I I focused on being great so that I could teach others to be great. And the thing that's I think it's important uh, that's really helped me the most is I I stopped uh, in, the, in the beginning. I was trying to motivate people. I don't think you can motivate people. I think you can set an example and get people excited about doing something because they see what you're doing or you could teach them the skill set so that they start having success on their own and become be su- successful as a result of what you taught them how to do. But I, I stopped trying to motivate. When I stopped, let me see, it took me about almost three years. And this is my third year. I was, uh, I, you know, I was trying to motivate people. And then I said, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to just focus on finding motivated people. And then I'm going to teach them everything that I've done, everything that I'm doing to have the success I've had or I'm having. And that's what I focus on. So I stopped trying to get people to do it. I start, I'd look for people's, uh, if they were motivated, I could see that through their actions and their dedication and what all, then I would spend a lot of time with those individuals and I stopped trying to get people to do it. And when I, when I made that switch, that's when my business really took off. So like in 1980, what was it? 84, 85, 86 is when I really came to that conclusion that sometime that year. So in my first year in the business, I made uh, 18000 part-time working basically a couple of days a week. The second year, I made 35000 I was full-time. And that's when I went and became a regional vice president. And in my third year, I made 86000 uh, because I started to develop. I, I made that switch to developing people versus trying to motivate people. And then and then the next year, I went from making 86000 to making 409000 and then the next year, I made eight hundred fifty-five thousand. And and I, if you look at that back today, this was like in nineteen eighty-eight. Um, that's the equivalent of like I was saying, making two or three million dollars a year back when I first got started in my fifth year. But the thing about that was I focused only on motivated people, and then I focused on teaching everything that I knew, everything that I was doing, everything that I did to those motivated people, and that's what really caused my business to explode. That's the, that was the, I, I think that was the big turning point. And I think most people, unfortunately, try to motivate people that aren't motivated. And that's like pouring water into a bucket with holes in it. It's a complete yeah. waste of energy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we'll go out and we'll, we'll get the results, we'll set the track record. And uh, that, that obviously proves that we know what the heck we're even doing. Mm-hmm. And then my goal is, uh, is, is I was kind of just following your system and following how everything mm-hmm. was, was to establish that track record almost to the point where people would then go, what are you doing? Yep. Then I knew mm-hmm. they were motivated to actually listen because right. they saw the results and they saw me making money. They saw me closing mm-hmm. sales and all that. Right. And, and, right. and I learned that from you. Now, Hector, during that time, I know that you're, you're working a lot. And, um, I know that that, uh, you know, I think sometimes people are always trying to avoid the work and they're just, yeah. the, the more you try to avoid the work, the longer the journey is going to take. In fact, it'll never happen. Correct. So, uh, you weren't doing that. You were, you were working very hard. Take us through that a little bit. I mean, what, what, how did you manage that during that time? I mean, obviously when, when we're young and we're, we're fired up, we're excited, we have a purpose, we can go work hard and have a ton of energy to do it. Um, but sometimes, you know, we might have a spouse who's not totally, uh, supporting us yet, or we've got kids that we've got to make sure that we're, you know, we're being good dads or, or good moms. If you're, if you're a woman out there, mm-hmm. talk about just the dynamics of that time, because you were, I mean, back then we didn't have cell phones, <laughs> you know, you, you were yeah. driving all over Southern California, uh, mm-hmm. putting on meetings all the time on appointments every single night. You were leading your, your bay shop. You had a big bay shop, which a big bay shop, you know, a hundred, 150 sell a month life insurance right. sales bay shop for 10 plus years and beyond that even. And right. a lot of, a lot of people do that for a couple of years and then they, they think they've done enough. So you just, mm-hmm. you did it and you continue to do it. So maybe just talk about that a little bit. I think that could be helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I'm looking back and there's a guy named Willie uh, Naranjo that's that I've been mentoring for several years now. And he's just absolutely killing it. He's doing exactly what um, I, I wish I would have done. I let up too soon as far as I'm concerned. But 
Uh, I've done well, but I could have, I mean, I think I could be making $10 million a year right now if I would have just did what I know now I should have done. So I, I, I've kind of counseled uh, Willie in doing that. And he's just, he's killing it. So um, I, th- I think, um, you know, I think the thing is, is you have to kind of know what you want out of your life because everybody has different idea of what, what a great life is, you know, and, and there's no right or wrong answer with that. I mean, I don't know, you know, everybody makes their, uh, has their own journey in life. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me is whatever it is for you, uh, just focus on being great at it, like great at what you do. Don't, don't, don't focus on anything, but being really great. And when you, you know, money follows greatness and you're going to do great if you do that. So that's, that has been my MO for as long as I can remember. I'm still, you know, every day I, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you should follow me on Twitter because I put out really great material on Twitter and I, I do it every day. I do it seven days a week. And I, and I don't just do it for people that are following me. I do it for myself. Uh, a lot of what I'm doing is to keep me energized about becoming better and becoming, uh, you know, uh, the kind of person that I want to become and to help other people do that as well. So that, that personal development thing, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a personal development freak. I, I I've been that way for 40 years plus. Okay. I I've always focused on that. And that's, I, that's all I've ever focused on as a result of that. My business has done really, really well. And I've helped a lot, a lot of people become successful with that focus is just being really great at what you do because money follows greatness. Very good. I th- yeah. yeah. Very good. So I, I know there's a story. I think it'd be good uh, if you don't mind sharing it um, mm-hmm. where, you know, your, your wife, Jan was, you were gone a lot. You were working a lot. You're doing, you're doing mm-hmm. a bunch and, and she's kind of going, okay, Hector, what are you doing? The money maybe wasn't coming in yet. Like you would both like at that time. Right. What did, and she tells a story really well. We should have had Jan on with you if she, yeah. <laughs> because she tells it really well, but, but talk about, I think a lot of men in that situation, they, they maybe cower to uh, their wife's wishes, which, Hey, you need to quit that thing and stay at your job, which would have cost you and your family uh, an ama- a legacy, a legacy. Millions. Yeah. And so as, and I'm not, you know, I don't think we need to be overbearing as men. I don't think you were that. I don't, you know, I think no. that the way you handled it though, maybe you can just comment on how, how does, how should, in your opinion, a, a husband handle a situation like that? Obviously, you know, I, I kind of know what your answer is going to be somewhat, but mm-hmm. I'd like to hear it from you. Well, I think, I think the, the big issue is your spouse. They know you, they see you, they see what you do or don't do. They see if you're really focused or you're unfocused or you're hardworking and committed or you're lazy. They, they know they can see it more better than anybody can see. You can't, you can't hide that. And so like for me, Jan was, I mean, I had a, you know, at the time I had like was quote a good job, right. You know, I was making about 50, $55,000 a year. This was back in 1983, 84. It's a long time ago. It's probably equivalent of making well in excess of a hundred thousand dollars a year today in today's dollars but um she she and she was an x-ray tech and she was making decent money I mean, between us we were making around you know 85 90 thousand dollars a year which which uh, again you know is pretty good money back then that's like making two or three hundred thousand dollars a year today so um uh so she thought we were doing well and for me um uh, i didn't see that i i saw the potential to do many, many times what we were doing, you know? And so she didn't see that in the beginning. And I basically just told her, you know, this, you know, when you married me, (laughs) you married me because you believed in me. And if you believe in me, if you actually do believe in me, you need to let me do this. You know, you need to, you need to support me in, in going after our dream or uh, my dream, which of course is our dream. And so we had a, a pretty tough conversation and finally, she said, OK, and she talked to her mother. This is important, I think. And her mother says, he's right. Why don't you just follow him and listen to what he's saying? And she'll, she she backed me. Her mom did. And that was shocking. But that helped. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then she did. Then she just got behind what I was doing instead of, you know, 
trying to get me to slow down or stop. And uh, we decided, uh, we made a commitment, you know, her and I together, we said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give it everything we have for the next five years. We're going to go no holds barred. We're going to just put every ounce of energy we have into building our Prime America business. And we're not going to let anything distract us. And that was kind of a pact that we made for a five-year period. Well, what happened then after that, you know, five years later, I'm making, you know, $800,000 a year or whatever. So that, so she saw the results. You know, I think one of the things you got to do uh, if you're going to be that person is you got to show results. You got to get it done. You you can't just talk about it. You got to, you got to get up every day and go after it and make things happen and show that your partner, you're committed. You're serious about this. You're, you're not just, you know, talking out of your, well, you know what, right? right? You're really, really serious. And I, that's, I think that's the big problem for most partnerships is the person that's doing it isn't committed to the point where they need to be. And uh, the partner sees that. And that's what causes the rift, I think, in, in a lot of situations. So yeah, she saw I was dead serious. Them, and then uh, and then I made it happen. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, that's that's the bottom line. I made it happen. Well, I think another thing, Hector, is I've as I've watched you know, as I've grown older, you know, I started the business, I was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, obviously because of the way that Brandon looked up to you, it obviously just, I did the same thing. And there was a lot of things that I watched you do, not just in business, but with your family and your personal life kind of from afar, because I didn't know you at that point that the older I get, the more wisdom I realized there was in your choices and your decisions. Um, so in addition to making a hundred million and probably far more than that from investments and decisions you made financially, uh, you've also, you know, like you just talked about raised two great children who have gone on to do incredible things. You've got a phenomenal marriage. You, you and Jan have been married for, I don't know, more than 40, 44 years, 44 years. Um, so you, you've been successful in all areas of your life and I know it was intentional. Can you maybe talk about some of these things? Because in the in route to financial success, you, I know you were intentional about having success in your family as a father, as a husband, and those things as well. Maybe you could talk about some of those things as well as you were chasing your business success. Yeah, I think that, you know, if, if you're going to be focused on becoming successful and getting free financially, you, 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 your, your family has to be part of that, you know, and I, and I think you need to include them in the conversation. So I think you need to sit down with them and, and talk about what you're going to do and why you're going to do it and get them to see, um, you know, this is something serious. And that, that, you know, for me, like I said, I came from a very, you know, ordinary life and, uh, family was not financially successful. So, uh, I knew that if it was going to change, it had to be me. And I and we had the conversation, Jan and I, that we, we, this is what we're going to do. And and we made that commitment together, although it was a little a little tough in the beginning. And then uh, the the really big thing for us was uh, not just talking to our kids about being successful, but showing them, actually having them see us operate on a day to day basis. And they could see the kind of energy that we invested, the kind of work ethic we had, the kind of mentality we had, uh, everything. I, I think it's important that you just don't talk a good game. You, you you exhibit a good game. You show you show your family that you're serious, and then you need to spend time with them. I, you know, even though I worked, uh, you know, I worked really really hard. Uh, we always, you know, made time for our family. We just, you know, your, your family has to be a priority. I mean, because if you make a bunch of money, but you lose your family in the process, that's that's a terrible situation in our opinion. You know, I, th- I don't think that's not good. I think you need to, that's why you need to include your, even your children and talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it and where you're headed and what the, what the, what that means to, to the family and what that means to them individually and, and all that. So I think that, you know, sharing that with them and, and showing them and talking about what you're doing. Like one of the things I, I'm a, I'm a voracious reader. Okay. I always have been, even when I was a kid and I was, I lived, I grew up a, like a block and a half away from our city library in a place called Chino, California. And uh, I used to 
live in the library when I was, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12 years old. I, I, I read constantly and I just was, I loved reading. And so um, when I started working on becoming successful in business, I, I've read, I think I've probably read in excess of 1500 books on personal development, having from people skills to sales skills to, you know, you know, uh, everything, right. The way you think, et cetera. And so um, I, I talked about that with my kids all the time and I got them doing it. Both my kids uh, had mimicked and modeled uh, what I did, you know, in terms of personal development. And so they both become very successful at what they do. And so um, I think that's the best thing you could do for your kids is to show them, not tell them talking at them. Isn't the key. It's showing them that you're doing that. It's kind of like, um, you know, with your spouse, you know, you, you can't just tell them you love them or you can't you just say, well, you should know that I do. I'm still here. I mean, you've got to show them every day. You've got to exhibit uh, what it is that 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 exemplifies that. Right. And I think that's true with your kids. I think that's true with your spouse, uh, you know, because without your family, what do you have really? You yeah. know, I mean, what do you have without your family? And, and and you can you can do all of it. You can become financially successful and have a great family as well. I know that because I've done it and I and I know you guys are doing it as well. And it's it's a doable thing. It's it, it takes it takes a focus on your, your part. You know, one thing I think that, that uh, it has to be intentional. It has to sure. be intentional. I, I, I think mm-hmm. that one of the things that I, I always admired about you, Hector, is how uh, how Christ like you are. And, and, and I'm assuming your faith has a lot to do with how you run your life. Would you mind yes. commenting on that a little bit? Um, what, what you maybe a little bit what you believe and, and how that's guided and directed your life as well? Yeah, I grew up Catholic, but I'm Christian. And uh, uh, yeah, that's totally guided. It. There's no question about it. I mean, because uh, everything about about being the right kind of person from a from a God's perspective is taking care of your family, taking care of those who, you know, who uh, taking your children, taking care of your spouse, being there for them, you know, being a big part of your community, um, being a great example in that area also. And then um, I, I think for me, my kind of my walk is sharing uh, with people that are interested, that are motivated how to improve their lives, how to make their life better, you know, and that's, that's been my, I guess, uh, my calling, my mission for my entire adult life is to do that. Uh, and I think I've had a lot of success in that area. And I, I want to continue to have that kind of success. You know, I'm 66 years old now and, you know, God willing, I hope I live to be a hundred. I mean, that's kind of a goal of mine and I'd like to do have a bigger impact on people, uh, uh, on, on people over those, over the next, whatever years I have left. Uh, I want to make sure that I do that. I think, uh, and I think that's a, that's a great legacy to leave your family as well, you know, where they see you the way that you operate and then they, uh, um, you know, model and mimic that in their own lives. And they, they have uh, success, but they also help other people, on the road to becoming successful. It's not just about us, right? Uh, We're kind of just, I guess we're conduits, if you will. And, um, you know, your example, whether you realize it or not, is has a profound impact on the people around you, especially your family, of course, but other people too, not just your family. Uh, You guys are doing this podcast. That's having a, that's having an effect on people. That's that's doing something that's that's contributing to to society, right? To the betterment of the world, I think. You know, and that that's kind of what I've always focused on doing. And um, you know, I wanted I want to do more, I, and I can do more. I you know, I've been very fortunate, and I, I I know the things I talk about work if you work, and uh, so I want to keep sharing those with people. Over you know, and you know, it's funny that uh, I have. Um, I don't. I have probably a lot more people that aren't in Primerica following me today than are in Primerica than are in my business. It's uh, there's a lot of people that follow me that uh, I get a lot of positive feedback from from people all over the I mean, literally all over the world. It's it's been very interesting to see that happen. But uh, I think you 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 don't realize uh, the kind of kind of impact you could make on people's lives when you 
you know, you really work on and becoming a, a great example. Well, right, that's that's what sticks out to me. I just it's it's not just the fundamentals of the tangible things you teach, um, but it's it's an internal. It's 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 you being you being who Hector Lamarck is supposed to be. It's, it's, it's a deeper, I mean, the reason I, I think the reason I follow you isn't just because you're a great teacher, but it's just because of who you are, how you present yourself. And, um, that's something that, I mean, you've worked on. I know you've worked on, um, you, you've invested a yeah. lot of time, you invest a lot of money in that. And that's why I asked you that question on, on your faith. Cause I know that's a, definitely a core value there. And you also take Absolutely. care of, you also take care of yourself. Um, yeah. you're, you're right. healthy and maybe you can comment on that. Your goal is to live to 100. Uh, how important is fitness and diet to you and Jan and your family? Well, it's everything. I mean, especially as you age, you know, I'm, I'm looking at myself here and I look a lot older than, than I remember, right? But uh, I, I uh, you know, I'm in, good, I'm in really good shape. I think it starts with what you eat. You know, the feel you put in your body is critical. Uh, I think people, number one, eat too much. And uh, they don't eat a lot of the right things. And there's no shortage of information on taking care of yourself from a dietary standpoint. I think you should really focus on that. I think being uh, lean and mean, if you will, you know, is really important. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm in good shape uh, physically. I don't have any real issues that, to speak of. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the way I eat and take care of my body and take care of, you know, exercise. I, I, I actually am now uh, going to, uh, you know, I, I've always done this, but I do pushups and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to really start working out. I've done a lot of research lately and the big, big key is, um, is, is, is lifting weights yep. is, you know, that that's more important than cardio, you yep. know, lifting weights and getting, and getting really lean and, and strong. Uh, so as you age, you're, you know, you can, you're not hunched over You're not, you know, shuffling along and that sort of thing. So I think, you know, I, you know, you got to eat really well. And I think you need to do weight training. Uh, you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you need to do weight training. You need to keep all your muscles very strong. And, 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 and that as you age, um, that's going to help you lead a much better quality of life. And you're going to hopefully live longer, right? And we'll see if, you know, that is the case, but I, I think that's really important. I, I think, um, uh, it's, it's not that complicated, right? It's, it's actually pretty simple, but you gotta, it's gotta be something you are consistent with. It's kind of like the personal development thing. It's gotta be something you do not once in a while, but it's part of your routine, your daily routine. You gotta have some half hour, hour, something, the same thing with, uh, with uh, exercising and stuff. I think, you know, you gotta have time, you gotta make time for that and, uh, you know, focus on being fit. Yeah, I think it's because there's no, there's no, there's no, it's kind of, kind of dumb to work really hard and get financially free and then be sick, yeah. you know, and well, not you, be healthy. You know, Hector, I, if, I mean, as, as long as I've known you, you've been in, you know, good physical shape, you know, I've, I've never yeah. seen you be overweight and these things. So we talk about all these things, you know, that, you know, you've built a great business, had a great family, you've been physically fit, you've got a great spiritual life. There are a lot of people I feel like uh, in the world, especially with social media and this modern day where they're always just trying to portray this certain image. Like they need to drive a certain car or live in a certain house or right. uh, act like they're this certain person. And I think, you know, when you were just talked about recently, you have people from all over the world following you, giving you feedback. One of the things I've always respected about you is I, I know the life that you live and You've never been Mr. Flash, if you will, um, but always had this aura and this leadership and this influence, not because of the things you had, which you have those things, or the life you live, which we know the life you live, but because of who you are as a man. Maybe if, if you can just allude to that for a minute about what has kept you grounded to continue and not get caught up with all of that and really just been an incredible example and a leader for people in all areas of their life. Like I'm saying, as I get older, 
the, the more respect I have for the wisdom that I caught from you, maybe not even realizing what I was learning from you in my early 20s and realizing how much impact it's had on my, my marriage, me as a father, my financial life. Um, and it, it wasn't because of the car you were driving or the house you were living in which all of those things I knew and and they did motivate me, right? That I knew it gave me the belief that, Hey, I could live that life too, but it wasn't the thing that drove your business or your success or the life you have today. So maybe you could talk to people that are just getting started in life, or maybe they're just starting to make some good money. Maybe they're just getting to a place where they have a chance to really create a legacy. Um, but you know, they have a choice to make a decision of making wise choices or unwise choices at that, at that fork in the road. Well, one thing I think that people, if you're really serious about becoming successful, the first thing you need to do is take care of your your own financial life. And things things are great when you can afford them. You know, if you're making enough money that you can afford them and you're you're financially set. But I think the number one thing I did that really helped is I, I focused on being debt free and financially independent. That was the that was that was the driving force. So things are nice. I drive nice cars and I have nice homes and all that stuff. But in the beginning, when I started doing well financially, my focus was to get debt free. I think that's the big thing. I think most people, if you realize how awesome it is, I've been debt free for decades now. But uh, if you knew how great it was to have no debt and have a massive passive income is what I call it, so that you can do what you want when you want with whom you want, how you want, et cetera. Okay. I mean, that, that, that to me was, was uh, freedom was the thing that I was after. I wasn't after things, although I, I like having a nice car and I like living in a nice homes and all that stuff's fine. And if you can afford it then then go for it, that's, there's, that's great. But I think mo- before all that, the most important thing is to get debt free and financially independent. And that means to me, having as much money as you need that you can live off the income that the money you have invested and saved can, um, you know, can take care of your, 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 the, the way you live. So that to me was the most important thing. So I don't want to, I didn't want to worry about money. I didn't worry, you know, like uh, just a perfect example. Um, my wife, Jan was diagnosed with breast cancer 18 years ago. And when that happened, I was already debt free. I was already financially independent and I was making, you know, a lot of money. And so I decided that I was going to focus on my family, especially focus on my relationship with my wife. And I couldn't have done that if I didn't do the right things financially. Okay. And so for the last 18 years, my focus has been entirely on my family and my wife. And I do still do the business. I still, I'm still engaged in that sort of thing, but that has not been the, the primary thing that my family has been the primary thing. And I can afford to do that because I have a business that puts off a lot of cash flow and I have a lot of money invested, puts off a lot of cash flow. So I don't really need to be anywhere or do anything. So if I could give you one, one bit of advice, focus on becoming debt-free and focus on, on, um, you know, ha- uh, having enough money invested that you can live the life that you decide you want to live, whatever that is, everybody's different. You know, uh, you know, your thing may be different from my thing, but the bottom line is you want to have control over your life. And I think, uh, you know, doing that before the nice cars, you know, those are great. If you notice, I don't really put a, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I'm not into the th- things uh, much, you know, maybe once in a while I might put something out there, but very, very, I don't talk about, you know, I've traveled to 70 countries. I've been all over the world. I've done, done it in first class, you know, uh, it's, it's been amazing the, the, the life we've had, but I don't really talk about that because what I'd like to talk about is what it takes to become successful for you. Not, not me. I mean, what I got is what I've got. It's not yours. You're not going to have, you know, I'm not giving it to you and you're not going to get it unless you go do the work. So I rather talk about the things you need to do to become successful for you and for your family. That's the thing I've always uh, really focused on doing. What I, what I always loved is we would go to a company convention and people say, where's Hector? I'm like, I don't know where Hector is. He's, he's living wherever an awesome he, life. Wherever he wants to be. <laughs> he's, he's doing what, exactly what I well, want I to do. I think what right? you so. just said, Hector, is the epitome of a servant leader, yeah. right? And so often, you know, people, especially in a business like ours with all the recognition and all the people wanting autographs and all this stuff, it's so easy mm-hmm. to get caught up 
with ego and thinking that, you know, the stuff and all of the flash and all that is the stuff that matters when really what matters is you getting financially independent, achieving your goals and dreams. And then what allows you to have influence is what you just said, really serving other people and helping them get that because then you build this massive amount of respect like you've built over your career, which has changed the lives of countless people, even outside of the business, you know, clients. I mean, how many clients are debt free and financially independent today because of the business that you built? You know, it's, it's awesome to think about. Right. Have you ever done the numbers on that Hector? Do you have any idea how many clients, Uh, how many, I mean, I have no, I don't, I mean, I know (laughs) what we, I mean, we have, uh, God, we're going close to $5 billion under management. So we've helped a lot of families there. Right. And uh, the number of uh, clients that we've serviced, I mean, is in the millions. Over I would the, imagine over the years. I would imagine the debt, the death claims. You probably pay a death claim a day. I would imagine in your higher. Oh yeah, we, more it's least, millions, yeah. millions and millions of dollars of death claims that we pay the, that take you know that is taking care of their families and uh, and then we have you know the you know, we've also helped a lot of people like you guys, you, you, you two mm-hmm. that have become very successful and have been able to live a life on their terms. You know, that's a, that's a big deal. Everybody's not going to build, you know, a multi-million dollar business, but everybody has a chance to, to really change their, their family's trajectory in life, you know? And I think that's, uh, I, that's, I'm very proud of that, that, that I've had a, a part in that in, in some small way and impacting people. And I, so I think the thing that I focus on is just keep doing the right things and everything else will happen as it should. You know, uh, I think managing ourselves is the most challenging thing uh, to do. But and when you learn how to manage yourself, then then you have an opportunity to help other people in a more significant, significant way. So good today, awesome. Hector. We really uh, just, again, appreciate you being on. I think uh, this has been really good. Uh, I love what you said. Money follows greatness. And if we'll just focus yeah. on being great in all areas, yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. way the way you treat us, I mean, we were, just so people kind of know, uh, Hector's organization is, is very, very big. And we were like a third generation regional vice president. You were fourth generation. Mm-hmm. We felt like we were direct to you in your base yeah. shop. You know, you you just right. have had a great way of treating everybody as if they're the most important person in the world. And um, yeah, you know. I still remember the first time Hector called me. If that tells you anything, mm-hmm. so that's, <laughs> it's kind of cool, Hector. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think that's uh, I think that's a that's great. I, that's exactly what. Uh, I mean, my focus is always on whoever's motivated and you guys are obviously very motivated it's easy to spend energy and time with motivated people i i uh, i think that's the the thing is is always be looking to see how you can impact people especially with your own personal example and then how you can you know how you can teach them skill sets and uh, knowledge that can help them succeed in their own lives for sure Awesome. Well, yeah, I think anybody listening to this, yeah, you guys make sure you go follow Hector on Twitter. I know he's, he's very active on Twitter and, um, there's audios you can get online of Hector. If you, if you're in sales, whether it's in financial services, like we were, or any kind of sales, there's, uh, audios you can get online. And, uh, I would Hector Lamarck.com. Hector Lamarck, yep. or, or at Hector Lamarck on Twitter. Yep. And I, yeah, I would highly suggest anybody listening to this to go get Hector's, especially, uh, he has so many phenomenal sales trainings that not only are going to teach you how to overcome objections and how to close sales, but just how to be an incredible person in the process. You know, he's got one audio called how to be a rainmaker, uh, which has helped me so much in all areas of my life, build incredible relationships, have opened up, uh, so many doors that I never knew was going to happen because of something I did 10 or 15 years ago, learning from that audio and 10 years later opens up a door that, that I never saw happening, but it was because of things like that. So I would highly suggest anybody listening to this to make sure get on and get his audio and and even if you just have a job i think a lot of those things like that audio how to how to become a rainmaker is is going to help you tremendously so uh thank you hector for being on today really appreciate you and and your example and and all all the time and effort and energy you've poured into brandon and i i know we're constantly talking to you about or constantly talking about you on this podcast and so it's going to be fun i think for a lot of people to uh, put a face to the name face to the to the name yeah and (laughs) that's uh, great and hear your philosophy and why it's been such a big impact in our lives so thanks again yeah thank you hector very welcome my pleasure yep tell jan hi for us love you too
You as well. Same thing. All right. We'll see you here. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye.